Hey there, YouTube. Just me, Ted. 1969 here tonight, and it's uh, February 24th, 2015. Only 10 months till Christmas. Yay! Uh, so yeah, Mad Woba tagged me in his video. Gotta love big plastic, and he hinted that he knew what some of my big plastic loves were, and he was definitely right. Shogun warriors all the way. This is some artwork I did about uh, oh a few months ago, back in the fall or winter, early winter anyway, and. Uh, there are the rest of my Shogun Warriors with the exception of one. So we've got uh, a couple of versions of Goldorak and Combatler V or Combatra as he's known in American style. Goldorak or UFO Robot uh, Grandizer. And uh, these are all childhood originals for mine. Uh, the one of them on the left, the little fella, actually came from a buddy of mine. He's let me be a custodian of it for a while. Moving on, sorry for the blur and the rush here, we have... Dragoon up here, and he's taking his place of honor, guarding uh, things still. So he's definitely up there, a silent sentinel for everything good. And we're going to move on to another love of mine from the 1970s, and you can see it now coming in on the camera. And this was G.I. Joe. Before Star Wars, this is what we loved. Uh, started in the 50s at the military line, by the 70s, Vietnam War, military fellow to favor. You had uh, the adventure team, which uh, was symbolized by their AT crest on their uniforms. And they got themselves into all kinds of uh, situations that would probably be easily or more easily handled by men with military experience. So these guys right now are trying to rescue uh, the stolen idol, as it says on the, uh, the box here. And uh, the big problem right now that they're facing is there's a snake guarding the idol. But if they can get rid of the snake uh, and chase that away, they're getting the idol and these rubies to uh, bring back to a museum, Indiana Jones style, before it was cool, eh? Uh, going on to the other, some other stuff that I've liked, not necessarily big plastic, but it made big things. It turned into big plastic if you put it all together. And that was the interchangeable world of the Micronauts, uh, which I have laid out here, some of my childhood originals. Some of it's been... Uh, kind of replenished and topped up with parts that I've gotten off eBay over the years. Here's the battle cruiser. I have to say this was definitely one of my favorite things as a child. And it was just so cool. It made umpteen different vehicles. As you can see on the box here, these are just some of the permutations you could make out of it. And uh, the whole thing was really cool. The Micronauts had a comic book line under Marvel Comics that uh, lasted for years and years after the toys probably waned in popularity, or at least I grew up a little bit more and stopped playing with them, but uh, definitely a great comic book, and uh, just a really, really cool toy line. You could put so many things together. These were like Lego of action figures. Uh, so yeah, if you can imagine Lego and action figures getting married and having kids, that's what you would have had in the Micronauts. And just amazing, great stuff. Beautiful spring-launched missiles you could take an eye out with, and it was all good fun and games. And, uh, yeah, so you had the battle cruiser, and uh, there's uh, Pegasus, I think it was, or Andromeda, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, but anyway, the uh, horse of Force Commander, and uh, his nemesis, of course, is Baron Karza. And a lot of people look at Baron Karza all in his black uniform and say, oh, you know, knockoff of Darth Vader. Guess what? Micronauts hit the toy market shelves in about 1975. Star Wars came out in 1977. So, yeah, it wasn't always, uh, you know, a knockoff type of thing. And uh, so, yeah, they might be making a, an evil alliance with some other sinister alien types of cultures. Uh, we'll look at that fella there. Not a big plastic again, but bigger plastic. It's definitely bigger than the three and three quarter. I think that's a five inch figure. And uh, Croyer, of course, in the Micronauts, uh, he lost one of his glider wings, so uh, he kind of sits back and reminisces about better days and, you know, goes on again, uh, to his other Croyer friends, and maybe that's why they were such turncoats in the comic books and turned against them. Who knows? Uh, not big plastic, but one of my favorite action figures, definitely, the Expanded Univor uh, Universe Old Republic uh, Trooper. Just such a cool figure. And I really liked him the most because he reminded me so much of the original G.I. Joes. He just came with so many gadgets. The assault knife, the pistol, the blaster rifle, the 
you know, the, the backpack with the stuff on it. Just so cool. I shrieked when I found this guy in the store because he was supposed to be some kind of an exclusive to uh, one of these uh, online stores, I think. And I found him in a Walmart and it was on sale at the time for like six bucks or something. I still have the receipt somewhere. I actually found a second one a couple of weeks later and I shrieked again like a girl. But I've got two Old Republic uh, troopers, so I'm happy. Big plastic, doesn't get any bigger than Macross, uh, so this is a VF-1S, uh, Roy Foker's machine, and it's in uh, fighter mode right now, because these things got loose really, really fast, they were by Yamato, uh, but a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful figure, and uh, it does make the Battleoid, and it also makes the uh, Jerwak uh, Guardian mode, and uh, yeah, really, really, really cool loved macross loved robotech and that was pretty cool stuff and i mean if you want to talk about uh, big ships uh you know these aliens were like 50 feet tall and uh, they had to make these planes that could turn into robots to fight the aliens so that was pretty cool not big plastic small plastic an old star wars die cast uh, x-way or a tie fighter yeah uh, yeah die cast tie fighter I had two of these. I still have the wings for the other one, but I only have the one Darth Vader that fits in there. Don't have any bodies, so if anybody wants to trade up for a body that has a body to spare and maybe wants some Micronaut stuff, we should talk, definitely. Uh, what else are we looking at? Micronauts line. This was the Astro Station. This was a pretty cool playset, and I have to say, I played with these things like crazy and broke it, and that's why some of the the stuff doesn't fit on it anymore. I actually got one or two more off of eBay to kind of top off the uh, spare parts for these as well. And uh, yeah, so the Astro Station came with this kind of a coffin thing. I think it was a suspended animation chamber for Buddy to hide out in. And uh, there was like some stations there in the back with the computer bank and they got a communications console. They had uh, weapons platforms up the yin yang. So, this thing was, uh, you know, pretty much a fierce little exploration unit. So, it could go out and explore, but it could also defend itself against anything that wanted trouble, too. Uh, I think that was called Pharoid, and he's still in there, but he's not in very good shape. So, we'll let him rest and respect his uh, Solas right now. And uh, just a real quick look at the uh, catalog sheet here. I didn't have half of these things. Wanted all of them, of course, but, you know, when you're a kid, you can only get so much if you don't want to get too spoiled. So, yeah, they were a really cool line. I guess in the early 2000s, they came out with a knockoff or a re-licensing of them, but they didn't turn out as everybody had hoped. But it's unfortunate, because, like I said, you could do just so much with these things. And, uh, you know, the figures just did everything, and you could add on to pieces, and they were really the granddaddy of the Transformers. Uh, some people say that, or the Shogun Warriors. I think kind of both uh, along the way probably ended up being somewhat like that. And uh, as a tribute to Mad Woba, I'm going to cap off the evening with some more Star Wars stuff. And uh, talking about your plastic figure case, this is the one I got. Star World figure case. Uh, obviously a knockoff, but you can even see the, uh, the font looks very similar to Star Wars. So it held only 12 space figures in one layer. And uh, I kind of like some of the knockoff stuff because, you know, it's a knockoff, but, you know, you can kind of see who's supposed to be who there. And uh, I just found it kind of cool. You got a space station and some sleek-looking 70s-style spaceships. These are right out of uh, all the old uh, sci-fi novels that I used to see at the library when I was a kid and look at these things and even uh, they stayed at the library forever and I saw them in the 80s when I'd be in high school doing my homework in the library and goofing off looking at sci-fi novels when I should have been doing more homework and made more of myself but anyway that's a story for another day and just we'll look quickly through uh, the figures that are in here vinyl cape Jawa unfortunately a torn cape I'm trying to think about restoring that somehow or repairing that tear, but I don't know if I want to risk it or not. I may order a knockoff cape just to make it look complete one day. And, uh, Snowtrooper, the original Yoda figure who remains one of the best Yodas as far as I'm concerned. Also, Madwoba. We've got a Chewie, we've got a Stormtrooper, a couple of R2-D2s. The original, this is my first Star Wars action figure that I got. 
either late 77 or early 78, whenever they first came out. I begged and begged and begged till I got this thing. I think they were $1.77 or something back then in those days. He doesn't click anymore and he hasn't got his paper, but I love this well, well, well. Uh, my C-3PO again, much like Mad Woba's, he's a little bit loose. He'd make a good river dancer. He doesn't stand up very well. There's Luke Sans lightsaber. And we've got Bespin Luke uh, spooned up with Boba Fett. And uh, Death Star Droid with Hammerhead, or an Athorian, I think, as they like to be referred to. And we've got uh, Storm Shadow. And we've got Obi-Wan Kenobi and a Sand People there. So Obi-Wan is also Sans Saber and Sans Cape. Sand People Sans Cape as well. Too bad, but uh, these things went through a lot as, uh, when I was a child, so... They had a great time with me playing, and I had a great, great time playing with them. So, yeah, these are definitely my favorite things. Not all big plastic, but big memories and big times with them. And I guess it all, all of my action figure love got my start. Early 70s, and I'm talking like probably 73, 74 when I was four or five years old uh, with the uh, G.I. Joe stuff. And you just can't go wrong with the old school G.I. Joe. Just amazing, the stuff that's out there. Look on eBay and see all of the uh, different sets that they have. Uh, so many, so many things that are out there for G.I. Joe. And uh, just really, really fun and just would set your imagination on fire. So yeah, that's my stuff. And I hope everybody's enjoying the videos and uh, getting tagged in them and making responses to them. And I'll sign off the night uh, wishing everyone well. Thank you for watching, and if you like it, uh, don't be afraid to subscribe and share.